I want to know how the Dicerus bicornis, commonly known as the Black Rhino, developed into the way it is today. We're going to be starting from its ancestor and making our way down its family tree, so that the story of the Black Rhino flows more smoothly and it is more understandable. But first, a quick preface about the Black Rhino. It is the smaller of the two African species, standing at about 5.2 feet high, measuring between 3 to 3.8 meters long, and weighing between 1,700 to 3,000 pounds. Living up to the name Two Horn Two Horn, they generally have two horns, though on the odd occasion they may have developed a third smaller one. Rhinos use their horns to defend themselves and their young and to battle other rhinos or species. An important trait of the black rhino is that it has a pointed upper lip. It's an adaptation that enables it to browse, eating from trees and bushes. Black rhinos are largely solitary animals, except for when they are raising their young. Sexual selection does occur with rhinos. Females mate with stronger males who may have bigger horns that have claimed and maintained their own territory and are able to keep the female within the territory. They live in southeastern Africa in hot and arid conditions. There are approximately five remaining subspecies in the wild. Subspecies are able to reproduce with each other, though it is just highly unlikely due to geographic separations. And now we start, but where? There's so many choices to choose from. It is important to note that the ancestor of today's rhinos once roamed all of Earth's continents, giving rise to new species, most of which are extinct. For example, the Colodonta atticatus, or the woolly rhino, is not an ancestor of the black rhino. Its only living descendant is a Sumatran rhino, which through evolution lost the fur and developed physical traits more similar to the black rhino because they live in similar environments. One might call that convergent evolution. It is also important to note that many of the potential ancestors of the black rhino are unknown due to the high number of primitive rhino species that existed. Everything is very much hypothetical. So the challenge is now to find one of the first ancestors of the rhino. After researching, I found her man to be among the genus Hyracodon. The exact species is unknown, but it could be one of these five. The inhabited North American Eurasia, appearing 48.6 million years ago, and dying off by 26.3 million years ago. These little guys are not much of a sight to behold. They greatly resemble the primitive horse, having about a meter long body, short stature, and skinny legs for running away from its predators. They had no horn, meaning that running was their primary defense. They appear to have inhabited a variety of ecosystems and were probably browsers because they had forward teeth that were not very well suited for eating grass. This may be in part why the Hyracodon declined and disappeared during the late Oligocene and early Miocene period. During this time, the forest began changing into grasslands. Researchers are also able to determine that Hyracodons are among the earliest ancestors of the black rhino due to fossil records. Since they are the earliest known ancestor, it is also important to recognize that adaptive radiation is at play. The Yoshin Epoch period was a hectic time and adaptations were occurring rapidly for many species all over the world. The word Eocian derives from the word dawn because many new mammal species began appearing and diversifying. As a Hyracodon were on different continents, even more adaptations occurred. Many new species began stemming from the Hyracodons, including the Paraceratherium species. Standing 5 meters tall and weighing up to 20 tons, the Paraceratherium was the largest land mammal to ever live. It had a much longer neck than today's rhinos, which helped the animal browse for leaves and tall trees. The long neck was a beneficial adaptation differentiating them from the Hyracodons. As the number of trees were fewer, mainly tall trees remained. Paraceratherium was fit to survive, while its ancestor was not. That is called natural selection. Nature chose a long neck and tall stature. It is still unclear how they got so big. First appearing 34 million years ago, it outlived its ancestors by 3 million years, going extinct 23 million years ago. They existed in Eurasia and Northern Asia. Similar to their ancestors, they did not have horns. Surprisingly, they still had slender legs because of their, mo of their ancestors. The slender legs are vestigial structures. They are remnants of its small running dependent ancestor. These giants, mainly due to their size, were not very apt at running and were not required to run as much since they had significantly fewer predators. Contributing factors to their extinction are climate change and the arrival of primitive elephants that could use their trunks to outcompete Paraceratherium for resources. The next ancestor we will be examining is the Aceratherium. It was a genus of rhinoceros of the tribe Aceratherium that lived in Eurasia, appearing 23 million years ago and disappearing approximately 5 million years ago. 
It reached 2.3 meters in length, a height of about 1.2 meters, and a height and a weight of nearly one ton. As you may see, ancestors began resembling the modern day black rhinoceros. Though it did not have a horn, it developed a similar stockiness and bulkiness for defense. As well, they lived in open spaces similar to savannas. They adapted to eating grass. Around 14 million years ago, the middle Myotian extinction occurred. Carbon dioxide was pulled out of the atmosphere, leading to the steady lowering of the temperature and the re-establishment of ice sheets around the world. This extinction led to the decrease of rhino species worldwide. However, the Acer Ethereum was able to survive. This led to the beneficial adaptations and helpful alleles being passed to the descendants through genetic drift. The beneficial alleles were present at a higher rate in the descendant species. The next ancestor following the Acer Ethereum was the Iranotherium. It appeared not very long after the middle Myotian extinction occurred and while its ancestor was still alive. It reached 4 meters in length and 2 meters in height and weighed up to 5 tons. It was believed that they, they lived around Asia. Of the known ancestors, it is one of the earliest with the horn. Of course, there had been prior species in the Rhinocera today family that had developed a horn, they just weren't ancestors of the black rhino. However, this horn was special. It was thick and measured over one meter long. Both the Iranotherium and the black rhinos both have very similar methods of sexual selection. It is thought that the Iranotherium females chose mates based off horn size and strength. Black rhino females don't necessarily choose mates directly based off of horn size, but size indirectly comes to play. They choose mates on how strong they are and how well they utilize their horn. The sexual selection behavior was potentially passed down from the Iranothoriums to the black rhinos. Last but not least, the most recent ancestor of the rhino was the Diceros breakox. Through studying their fossils, it has been determined that they arrived in Africa between 11 to 8 million years ago. Not much is known about their physical traits except for the fact that they had two horns as they are part of the Diceros genus. When the Diceros praecox arrived in Africa, it was believed to be the only species on the continent. They were geographically separ separated from all other rhino species. This means that as the Diceros praecox spread through Africa, the adaptations and evolutions followed the course outlined by the founder effect. The small founder populations reproduced and naturally there were different allele frequencies leading to the formation of new species. This is also an example of an allopatric speciation. The black rhino split from Diceros praecox around 5 million years ago, around the same time as the white rhinos. But this is where it gets interesting. Normally, white rhinos and black rhinos would never mate due to various forms of isolation, but in the 1980s, a black rhino bull and a white rhino female sexually reproduced in an enclosure. This is essentially an example of artificial selection because this mating would not happen in the wild. In the end, a hybrid was successfully born having exactly half the chromosomes from the mother and half from the father, displaying physical traits from both. Unfortunately, the hybrid is called while still young, so it is undetermined as to whether it was fertile. What that shows us is that the white rhino and black rhino are still very genetically close, further pro proving the existence of the Diceros praecox that was a direct ancestor to both. We've come to the end of the line. The black rhino is now very well suited to its environment due to adaptations. As a large stocky body that is able to sustain potential attacks from various predators in southeastern Africa like lions, crocodiles, and jaguars, its two horns are also sufficient enough to keep them safe and able to fend off attacks. Interestingly, their horns are made of keratin, the same substance nails are made of. This means that on the occasion that they lose them or break them, they are able to grow new ones. Their curved upper lip also allows them to eat from trees and bushes, which is what their environment is mainly comprised of. There are only two rhinoceros species in Africa, and to the best of our knowledge, the black rhino is not evolved into a new species. As you may have noticed, evolution is a very long process. Genetic mutations provide a continuous supply of new heritable information and variation within a species, which over time leads to evolution. A key player in evolution is genetic variation. Genetic variation is when members of the same species develop different frequencies of alleles because they are in different environments or spaces. Genetic variation serves as a way to adapt to changing environments. Genetic variation affects all the developments of new species. A good example of the effect of genetic variation is with the Diceros praecox. Genetic variation between isolated species members led to the adaptation and eventual evolution into the black rhino and white rhino. As well, the area that the Diceros praecox lived and their fossils were found in the same general area as the black rhino. 
The study between the locations of the ancestor and the descendant is an example of biogeography. And now a quick recap. The evolution of the black rhino took approximately 40 million years from the time of the hyracodons. The hyracodons gave rise to the Paraceratheriums, which we analyzed looking at fossils and adaptive radiation. The Paraceratheriums gave rise to the Aceratheriums, and we examined their evolution and history looking at vestigial structures and natural selection. Aceratheriums gave rise to the Aranotheriums, and we analyzed the mass extinction that gave rise to the Aceratherium and the development of similar sexual selection methods in Aranotheriums that were similar in black rhinos. The last and most recent ancestor we looked at was Dicerus praecox. We analyzed how it evolved into the black rhino through adaptation variation, biogeography, isolated mechanisms, and allopatric speciation. You may have seen this circulating the TV, TV waves from 12 years ago. After your first time watching it, you were probably dumbfolded by the possibility of how it evolved or how it came to being. Unfortunately, you probably had your heart dashed when you realized it wasn't real. But hypothetically, could it exist? Could the rhino possibly evolve into to such a small animal? Maybe. What going through the evolution of rhinos shows us is that the rhino has evolved from a little pony-like animal to the biggest animal that, to the biggest land mammal that ever lived in order to survive. Will it ever undergo such drastic changes again? Only time can tell.